All right, so with that note, I guess we're official. Um, welcome to this week's database development web series brought to you by our Oracle Developer Tools team, which is composed of all of the products and technologies you see here on the right of this slide. Today happens to be talking about uh, SQL Developer, and last week we introduced um, our new technology, um, SQL CL, which is also from the SQL Developer team. Um, our intent is not to have every week be all about SQL Developer. Um, I'm going to work with the Windows team here to maybe present next week, or maybe uh, the Application Express team. So look forward to topics across all of this tech space. Today's message is Oracle SQL Developer for the DBA. If you missed last week's session, if you go to the OTN page where um, this information is listed, you can see the recording from last week. Uh, after this call is up, it takes about 20-30 minutes and I'll have a, a recording link for this week's session. And we plan on doing this every week. So if you like this, if you think it's valuable, feel free to pass it along to your coworkers, your friends, um, probably not your family. But um, we're, we're doing these to kind of give our customers just another avenue to interact um, with our technology. So these are meant to be open-ended. If you have questions, feel free to ask. You're not just meant to sit there and soak everything up like a sponge. Um, I'm not preaching. I have content to fill the hour, but if someone has a related topic and they want to go down that avenue, feel free. So with all of that set up stuff to the particulars, uh, my name is Jeff Smith. I am the product manager for Oracle SQL Developer. Uh, this is my real email address. Feel free to contact me if you have questions and you don't want to share them for the recording and audiences to listen to this. And if you're on Twitter, I'm at that Jeff Smith, and that's a good place to ask me quick and um, dirty questions about any of our tools. I spend way too much time on Twitter, but that's a different story. Some of what I'm about to show you has not been officially released yet, so this is our safe harbor statement. Have no fear, you shouldn't be tempted to make any purchasing decisions because all of the technology I'm about to show you um, is uh, basically free. If it's not, I'll, uh, I'll call it out. What is SQL Developer? It's our database IDE. It's a graphical user interface. It's installed with the database. It's a Java application, which means you can run it on all of the major operating systems by far still dominated by Windows, um, distant, distant second, or Mac, and a few smattering of all the various Unix and Linux variations out there. But if you can run Java 7 or Java 8, uh, the JDK on your machine, you're going to be able to run SQL Developer. It's also our third-party migration platform, so if you're a um, application DBA and you need help moving your SQL Server, or Sybase, or Teradata um, DB2 system over into Oracle, we can help you with that. I'm not going to talk about that today, but we are here for that. There's also a full, fully functional data modeling solution built into SQL Developer. don't have time really to talk about uh, data modeling, but I'm sure that'll be a, a topic for a future session. And here in the last year, we've been um, setting up SQL Developer to also, um, I've got a stale slide here that should say Oracle REST Data Services. There we go, that's better. Um, so the product formerly known as Oracle Application Listener, or Oracle Apex Listener, is now known as Oracle REST Data Services. Uh, with version 4.1 of the tool, when it's uh, 
released officially, you'll be able to uh, deploy and configure um, that technology all from SQL Developer and um, administer uh, your RESTful services, define RESTful services, test them, tweak them. Um, whereas today, that's a lot of XML files that you're um, handling on the server and, and using a command line kind of type interface. So to put things into context, we're talking about um, database administration features in the tool. When we first um, put out SQL Developer, technically back in 2005, I think, it really didn't have any database administration features, although it did have a, a few reports that DBAs would find interesting. And it wasn't until four or five years later that we added this official um, database administration panel in version 3.1. So for the bulk of what I'm about to show you, you want to be on at least version 3.1, which is already coming up on three years old. I would recommend you be on version 4.0.3, which was released um, right before Open World last fall. I'm demoing using 4.1, which is available now as an early adopter. If you'll just give me a second, someone's having problems with the voice, so let me uh, listen to that. Okay. So let's get into the features. So there was one um, database kind of type administration uh, page before the DBA panel was introduced. So on the connection tree, if you right click on a connection, you could say manage database. And this would bring up a kind of a table space report with some very, very basic um, memory um, stats. And uh, there was also like a shutdown button on here if you're logged in as SysDBA. And then, like I mentioned previously, from the very beginning, we had these reports. So these are, by default, read-only reports. Uh, the reports panel is available under the View menu, although we do open it by default. You click on a report, you say which database you want to talk to, and it would come back with um, lots and lots of information. I mean, the reports are great, and I don't want to de demean them or treat them as a second-class feature. They're definitely a first-class feature. So if you quickly want to know what your init parameters are, you know, um, what sessions are running, um, what uh, sessions are experiencing uh, blocks or causing blocks, if you want to know all of your partition tables, we have reports in here for, for all of that. But the reports aren't really interactive. I mean, you run the report, you see the the information back. There are, you know, there's there's nothing in there to, you know, for example, create a new AWR uh, snapshot. Or there's no interface to create a user. You can just see the users. So while useful, the reports don't give you everything you would expect to see in a in an interface for Oracle database. So with the DBA panel, that's when we started adding. Um, things to the tree uh, and out of the schema space, more in the database space with right clicks where you can go in and say alter, create, drop, add, all of that, all of that good stuff. Now the DBA panel basically assumes, it doesn't require, but it assumes that you're a highly privileged user. So just think I have the DBA role. If you don't have the DBA role, you can still go down there, um, but expect things to work or not based on the privileges you're actual DBA has granted you. And I have a brand new fresh install of SQL Developer, or at least I thought I did. I must have closed it. So let me actually alt-tab into my app, or start it. Oh, we're not going to do that. Actually, we are. This is 
what I get for testing. Oh, here it is. It is there. Yes. Tom Kai did a great presentation at uh, Hot Sauce this week down in Dallas, which is kind of a performance um, minded conference. It's been around for, I think, 13 or 14 years now. And he said one of the things he's learned over the last 20 years is that live demos are dangerous, and he actually learned that in the very first presentation he ever did. He had a live demo crash on him with like 1,500 people watching. But um, I know this from myself, and I still insist on doing live demos because it's just more fun. So when you start at the tool, you're not going to have any connections, and your DBA panel is also going to be blank. So what you'll need to do is to define a connection up here first. And you can call the connection anything you want. I'm going to call it um, CDBSYS. When I go into the highly privileged accounts, I always give it a um, red kick a red collar connection scheme. And you'll notice in 4.1 we've added the additional sys roles. So you don't have to come in as sys DBA. You can now come up using one of these other ones. These are these are new for 12. I am going to come in as sys DBA though. Test this connection. Success. And I can just connect. And to get into the DBA tree, we're going to click the plus button. After it paints and opens a worksheet for me. So we don't, by default, just list every single connection you have, because you might not be a DBA, or you might not have a DBA role in every type of connection you have. So I did guess right. This is actually a container. This works perfectly fine if you're in a non-container architecture or if you're in an 11 um, GR2 instance. So don't freak out that I just happen to be in 12C. And the first thing I was going to talk about, and by the way, I'm not showing you every single database administration feature. I'm just going to try to cover some of the highlights. So before we had a report to show um, init parameters, this shows actually the same. I can filter if I want. Uh, what would I want to uh, let's say um, parameter like dump. So if I want to change user dump dest, I can actually do that and then um, commit that up to the instance and also write to the SP file. So this is not a just look at it and see what's going on. This could be a, you know, potentially a very dangerous screen if you're coming in here and doing things that you shouldn't be. So I'm not going to tell you folks to be careful here. You should just assume that or, or know that. On the status page, this used to be just a basic overview of the status. So we would tell you if the database was up, how long it had been up, information on the host and Oracle Home and the listener. For 4.1, which is where the safe harbor screen comes in, we've added a brand new feature called DB Instance, or as I've been calling it, the Instance Viewer. And this will take a second to paint. Here, 
There we go. So this is a live, um, constantly refreshing screen showing me what's happening in my instance, or in this case, the container database. And you can make this screen as big as you want. You can also float the screen, go full screen with this, drag it over to a separate monitor if you want, nice big sexy 5 or 4K monitor if you've got that kind of money. This should render very, very well. It's using um, HTML5, cascading style sheets, but it's being powered by JavaFX. So here I have an overview. How many people are connected? Are any of those people being blocked? Um, what's the I.O. happening on the system? Um, what are the top weight events? What's storage look like? Um, redo logs, log switches. Um, and we worked with our real um, performance team. Um, we worked with a bunch of well, very well-respected um, internal and public-facing performance specialists and DBAs and said, look, if you were going to come into a system, what would you want to see? And um, with those interviews and with some work with our really talented uh, graphic artist we have, this is the this is the screen that we came up with. This doesn't require you to install anything on the server. There aren't any agents or jobs running. Um, there isn't any data being collected to be viewed later, so there's no repository. This gets read in, you see it, and then when you close the screen, it goes away. There also aren't any alerts. You know, this isn't going to send emails. You're not going to have any windows or um, anything like that set up to maintain. This is just ad hoc, very quickly, show me what's happening on my box. And if I were to double click on one of these panels, what will open up today is a report where you could actually go in and see and do things. Our intent is um, as this technology matures, we'll have a nice Java FX kind of HTML type page for all of these drill downs. Again, you can go um, evaluate this, see it for yourself, provide feedback um, by downloading the Early Adopter 1 off of our OTN product page. And we're about to publish uh, an update, an Early Adopter 2, um, which will have the exact look and feel that you're seeing right now. If you download the EA1, it looks pretty much like this, but um, we've cleaned up the text and the, the graphs a good bit. I can't spend all day talking about this because we've got a lot of stuff to go through, but I, I think folks will, will enjoy having this. So if you're already in the database and you don't want to go over to your official uh, monitoring solution or go run your scripts, you can quickly launch this and um, see what's going on. So that's View, DBA, Connect, come into the database status page and open or click on DB Instance. If you guys or gals come in here and any of these widgets are kind of grayed out or not painting, the biggest um, biggest culprit for that is you're logged in with an account that doesn't have the privileges required to um, get that data. And before I close the screen, I'll show you a trick you can use, or not a trick, but a technique you're going to be able to use in 4.1 to see what privileges you might be missing. So another new feature in 4.1 is the statement logging. Anything that goes across the JDBC driver, we automatically grab and, and print out for here, print out here for you if this is open. So you can actually see the queries that are going across. You can see how frequently we're refreshing these panels. You can see what um, binds we're passing over as parameters to these statements. It's got a nice filter dialog, so I could say, hey, just show me, you know, where. GV dollar uh, PQ views are being queried, or looks like V dollar session in this case are coming through. And you can even see how much time has elapsed since the last time it ran. So this would be our client perspective of elapsed time for that for that query. So here we are back to 
all of them. So again, if you want to see, and this is not just for this screen, this is for the entire application, but this logger is happening. That's view, log, and then the statements panel. So if you're a DBA and you're actually um, supporting a group of developers or just other SQL developer users in your org because you're kind of the, the smart girl or the smart boy, you know, you can use this log panel to see what queries we're using to populate the trees, to get the code insight features working, um, and that can give you an idea of the views that we're querying um, to see if you know whether or not you need to grant select privs for other folks to be able to use the same stuff. So it's a really nice kind of debug feature, I think. Or if you're just curious, it's a good way to learn how, how we're doing things. So there's the teaser slide. Sometimes I go too fast. Okay, so um, on the main connection tree, we have a scheduler interface, which isn't necessarily just for DBAs, although oftentimes it requires DBA type access, you know, having a directory on the server. Um, if, if you want to come up and set in, or come in and set up a, a data pump um, job, you wouldn't do that on the DBA panel. You would come up and do that on the connection panel. What you would use the DBA panel for is to um, see if there are any jobs currently running. Pretty much. So I can see um, export jobs and import jobs that are just running at this moment. Otherwise, you would find those jobs living permanently under this under the schema, the user in the tree above, um, where they're defined. But I like just to talk about the data pump stuff, just because a lot of people don't realize. Um, that support is in there for everyone that has access to run it. We also support DBMS jobs, so you can run all of that from underneath the scheduler panel. New for 4.0, so you don't need 4.1 for this. If you're licensed for the diagnostic and tuning packs, mostly the diagnostic pack, there's a lot of good stuff um, down here under the um, performance page. Oh, and I clicked on the wrong thing. So, um, active session history reports, a DDM um, compares, uh, managing your snapshots, creating baselines, um, all kinds of goodies. some reason my screen's locked up. So we'll do the next best thing and cheat. Start up a new app. Again, live demo is fun until it's not. Before you freak out about us touching um, things like diagnostic pack, tuning pack, um, application lifecycle pack, anytime we do touch one of those um, extra licensable features, we um, warn you and you have to agree to use it. And you can also go into your preferences and say, you know, I'm licensed it licensed for, you know, diagnostic pack on these servers. I'm additionally licensed for tuning pack on these servers. And um, once you do that, you just won't see um, those options anymore in, in the interface. And you set that up in the preferences. 
tools on Windows on tools um, database and licensing so I can say hey I'm only set up for these on these don't don't show me this stuff on the other ones okay so on the performance node here I can see all my snapshots or basically a filtered list of snapshots Maybe I want to filter and just say, "Hey, show me only show me snap uh, only show me snapshots that have automatic database diagnostic monitoring findings." Um, these snapshot IDs look funny. That's because they're hyperlinks. So I can actually drill down into um, that snapshot, see what's going on in here, and see the findings. So I've got prompt problems and symptoms. Uh, I/O significant database time. Maybe that's a problem, or maybe that's a symptom of this problem. And I can double click into um, the finding, what it's seen, and the report attached to that. Other DBAs have told me they don't find these extremely useful, but what they do find useful. Um, are comparing um, findings, which we allow you to do too if you want. Uh, let's drill into ASH though. So active session history, what's happened in the last few minutes. I think we default to five. The output here is going to look very similar to what you're already used to seeing if you're writing these reports via um, SQL Plus and spitting out to text or to HTML, or if you're writing them, of course, in EM12C. It's just, hey, if you're already in SQL Developer and you like being in SQL Developer and you don't want to have to alt-tab or start up another application to see this stuff, um, it's in here for you when you need it. And sometimes reports take longer than others to spin up. Here's that warning you get the first time you come in. Uh, we do have an RMAN interface, and I always feel a little weird about showing people how to use an RMAN interface without also talking to them about how to use RMAN. Um, so I always put it out there. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to do backup and recovery, but I will show you that you can use um, SQL Developer to help set up Recovery Manager operations. Here's that report, by the way. So there's my top SQL, top SQL using literals, top parsing apps. And um, you know, if this is hard to read, um, you can always just immediately shoot this out to your web browser. So that'll export that out to a temp file and um, now it's in Chrome, you know, or whatever browser you have set up. You can be the source and all of your uh, fun stuff there. If I want to run this report again, I just click this button, change my inputs out. You know, I can do filtering. So this is going to query for actual modules that show up in this time frame. And I don't have to say minutes, I can also say specified um, from this time to that time. Okay, like I could spend a whole hour just on this performance tree, and I know not everyone has Enterprise Edition with Diagnostic Pack, so I don't want to consume too much space there. But if you do have it, you should take advantage of it. Oh man, that's right. So I, I think instead of talking about the wizard, not the wonderful wizard, but instead of talking about the army and wizard that we have, which we do, I want to have screenshots for, I can at least talk about it. Um, you can define an army and um, operation and schedule it, and we'll deploy an operating system 
script out to your server to run that kind of stuff for us. What's probably more useful to you immediately is seeing these reports. You know, what are their current army and settings? And policies and what do you have set up for flash recovery? And if you have backups and if you have backup jobs, and uh, I have not set up this instance to demo that, um, you can drill into a backup set and see what's in the backup and get all of the backup um, job stats. It's really, really nice if you're not already in the RMAN interface. Uh, resource manager. So a lot of users kind of find out about the resource manager, um, not directly, but they feel it when their database connections kind of go away because they've been idle. Um, as a DBA, if you want to set those up, you can use um, the interface here to do that. Or if you want to define a new consumer group, you can do that. Or if you want to create a new plan and assign that to a group, you can do that as well. Scheduler. So scheduler up top is for actually defining um, jobs. Um, scheduler down here in the DBA panel is for doing things like defining windows. You know, so what's a weekend window? How's that defined? And you can come in here and do that. Oh, what's interesting? I guess what's interesting is this little drawdown, you get a, a good amount of flexibility for defining the time periods. And I'm just going to click around because I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing. What I want you to concentrate on is on this dialog, the SQL panel, because I know a lot of DBAs are a bit distrustful of GUIs, or they're especially distrustful of junior DBAs that don't know how to do the code bits and just click on GUIs. So what we try to do in the tool always and everywhere is expose the code that we're generating on your behalf. So whether you use the graphical user interface to run this stuff or to just generate the code and then you copy this out to Notepad and run it in SQL Plus or test it and tweak it and, and run it somewhere else, that that's up to you. I'm, I'm just here to show you what the tool's capable of. But um, you can have your cake and eat it too. You can save yourself a bunch of clicks. You can get the code out, copy this, run it somewhere else. Or if you're looking over this and you're confident that it's great and You've already tested it, you know, go ahead and click the apply button. That'll go run it. Security. So I get asked all the time, how do I reset users' passwords? Surprise, that's on the security page. So we have users. And I can come in on a user, maybe um, I don't have HR on this one. Oh, I'm in the container, so that's why I don't see them. So these are the container users. So I can come in on a user. I can expire their password. If I want to reset their password, then I would hit the edit dialog and then just type their new password here. And then do I want them to change it once they get into the login with the temp password that you've created for them? Of course, I might have to unlock it if I want them to get very far. Uh, but you can also see roles that have been granted, system privileges that are granted. So if I wanted to do something crazy like um, check all of these. And 
and we're going to unlock the user. So we're doing all kinds of stuff here. Again, here's that SQL page to see all of that work. So you know exactly what's going to happen. Don't use passwords like, like me. Use better passwords. Users can reset their own passwords in SQL Developer. For that to work, you just need to um, set up for, as the install image, um, having a, a client, an Oracle client on the machine that SQL Developer can use because the JDBC driver doesn't have the built-in function to reset a password without already being connected. But if you do what's called a fat client or a thick connection in SQL Developer with that client, we can make that OCI call. Um, and I have a, a blog post, and there's actually lots of information out there on how to get get it so users can reset their own passwords, which I recommend you set up because I, I, you probably spend too much time now doing it for them, so let them kind of take care of themselves, assuming that they pay attention to the warnings and do it before they're totally locked out. Um, a lot of folks kind of don't stumble into this audit settings page, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's all of database Oracle auditing, so I can see failed login trails if that's set up. Um, I can see the uh, options for auditing. I can change what's being audited. Here's using this. That turns it on once it's been running. Then now we just come in and look at the um, the privileges trail to see those entries. So this one node under security has tons of pages with tons and tons of great information in it. If you're using auditing, don't overlook that. Failed logins. I'm not very good, am I? Although in my defense, I did create a user called expires to test expiration, and I wasn't supposed to be able to get in, so that's my excuse there. Storage. This is a, I also get asked this one a lot. You know, how can I extend a, a table space or add a data file or resize a data file? That's all under the storage page, and it's not just table spaces. Although it obviously starts with table spaces. So here's a, here's a list of all the table spaces. And there are some charts in here. I'm not going to click on this one because it takes a while to run. It does a lot of math. But I can drill into the user's table space from here. I can see the data file. I can edit this data file. And by editing the data file, I mean I can do things like resize it. That would be a fun one. That's bytes, so that's five terabytes. Not going to do that. That would be a fun way to end the demo. I can see what objects are in this file. I can right click on table spaces and say, I want to create a new table space. All kinds of goodies. And I can manage temp in here, control files. That's a nice one. I don't think I've ever actually played with that one before, but it's, that one's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not running an archive log mode, but if I was, I could see this here. And I'm not running in archive log mode because I'm on a pretty small VM and I don't want to fill it up with logs. So do as I say, don't do as I don't do as I do. Here's a screenshot of that usage chart report 
for my users table space. So it's basically just telling me what users are using what percentage of that space. And here's the data files page. Instead of actually looking at it straight up from table spaces, you can look at just at the, the data files. You probably have more than that on your database. So I don't know how useful that's going to be. And there are the actions that you can perform on a data file when you right click on one. Database 12C support. So 12 is the new 11. Eventually we're all going to be there. So whether this applies to you today or a near or distant tomorrow, um, this is what you need to know. Um, SQL Developer version 3.2 ships with 12.1 database. And um, 3.2 has the um, 12C support. It's also in 4.0, of course, so I recommend you be on version 4.0. We support the multi-tenant architecture. So if I'm in a container database, I can do things like uh, clone a plug, a bull database. I can unplug and plug in these files, or these database, these um, pluggable databases. We've got um, support for uh, data redaction, so you can create redaction policies for your tables. I should note that redaction feature was backported to 11.204. And we also have support, more than support, we have a full interface for the SQL translation framework, um, which is very, very nice if you're migrating Sybase or SQL Server applications to an Oracle database platform. This allows you to have the database translate that native T-SQL into Oracle SQL and PL SQL on the fly. So it's it's really nice for helping you migrate those applications over. And it lets the screen start to paint. Um, you can come in and see um, where the screens are not painting correctly. Come in and look at the translations that have been captured and change those up on the fly and refresh your application screen and it's going to run um, what it needs to run to work. So there's a screenshot of multi-tenant. I want to clone a database. I want to plug or unplug. Again, we're generating this code for you, so it's not magic. You can see what you're doing. Here's a screenshot of redaction. So um, a redaction policy, you get one per table, and then inside of that table, inside of that policy, you can have one or more um, uh, columns defined. So in this case, I've got a uh, random uh, redaction policy for salary. So every time I query um, someone's name and salary, the numbers change. So if you're doing testing, um, the screens paint correctly. Um, if you're in prod and someone's in there that shouldn't be, they may freak out. But if they look at the number again, it's going to change. So who knows what's going to happen? But you know, it keeps people or helps keep people stay out of trouble. The um, redaction policy support should be available there in 11.204. If you're connected to an 11.204 instance, you should see the redaction um, context menu for your tables. Here's a screenshot of the SQL translation framework. So not to get too into this, but um, it works with a translator that you have to deploy to the database, and you can do that from SQL Developer. So if you come into the SQL translator framework tree in the DBA page. Um, you can upload a translator uh, for either Sybase, ASC, or SQL Server. In either case, that's T-SQL translations that's happening. And once you activate those and create what's called a profile, and then that profile is just a collection of all of the code that's been captured and translated. Um, you can see what came in and, and how the translator translated it, and you can come in and approve those or change those. And it basically allows you to take any code coming into the database and change it up on the fly. So a couple of performance-minded people have figured out they can use the SQL translation framework without an actual translator um, to capture Oracle SQL coming in from hard-coded applications and um, 
change that SQL in order to tune it. So here's a list of queries before and after. We have a, a white paper on our product page um, that talks all about all of the database 12C migration features and how to take advantage of those, and it goes into a little bit more detail on the translation framework. Yeah, I just like that picture, so I put him in there. You could do interesting things with the translator. So, um, things that aren't necessarily part of the DBA panel, but that DBAs might find interesting. We have support for real-time SQL monitoring, which is part of the tuning pack. So, um, power devs that understand plans, and of course the DBAs that have to help them tune their application SQL. Um, you can see that stuff running on the fly, and you can actually generate the um, enterprise manager kind of flash HTML page renderings of those with the execution plans. You can find that under the tools menu. It's tools monitor SQL. We have a session monitoring page. So tools monitor SQL launches real time. Monitor sessions shows me sessions. And I can click on a session and see what it's currently running. I can right click on the session, start a trace, or ask that session to go away. So here's a query. Here's the plan for that query. Any waits going on? If I had a backup running and it's writing to the V dollar long ops page, I could actually get progress of that task that's running from down here. Database di uh, database diff does a schema compare of the metadata, not of the data itself. So you can select one or more objects from one or more places, and, and the tool will generate the DDL and show you a side-by-side -side report of those differences and attempt to generate alter scripts to bring those into sync. That's a free feature. That doesn't cost anything extra. Real-time SQL monitoring, like I said, is part of the tuning pack, so that, that is an extra pay feature. And then, of course, we have the reports, which we kind of let off with. So um, some resources. You, of course, know about Oracle Technology Network. Our product page is there. If you pull up our product page, there's actually a section there dedicated for DBAs. And if you click on the DBA link, Actually, it says administer, but same difference. We filter the content just to that specific audience. So the YouTube videos and the hands-on labs and the screenshots, these are just the DBA ones. So here's a screenshot of your backup image copies. And here's a list of feature demonstrations for the DBA. Hopefully this link still works. Yep, so how to use SQL Tuning Advisor, how to do reporting, anything that we've tagged with the DBA bit shows here how to do data pump. All right, feature exchange. Yeah, feature exchange. Um, you can go there and um, suggest any database administration features you think we've left out. That forms link is old. Um, you know how to find us on the forms. The link is on our product page, which apparently already closed. And we have the Oracle Learning Library, which has lots and lots of great stuff. Hands-on labs, video tutorials, like you know, just technical papers to read. So that's the end of my prepared content. Um, we run these for an
an hour, but I'm happy to say goodbye now or take questions if people have them that they've saved up. And um, I can end the recording, too, and then let people ask questions if they're a little shy about being recorded for all time. Do we have any questions? I think everyone's mic should be open. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so I, I just tried out the Ash Reporter and some of the other reports under the performance node. Yes. And um, I'm, I'm getting some errors. Uh, so when I click on Ash Reporter and I say, uh, click the little run button at the top, the generate report, yes. I'm getting an invalid identifier uh, error. Do you know what version of the tool you're running? Uh, let's see here. I'm on 4.0.3.16. Are you, by any chance, on a uh, rack instance? I don't think so, no. I know we had some bugs in an earlier version of the tool where we didn't take into account having multiple instances available to run reports out of. Um, I thought we would have had that fixed for 4.0.2. You might want to pull down 4.0.3 um, because I know that particular bug has been fixed. Oh, no, this is 4.0.3. Yeah. Oh, it is 4.0.3. Yeah. Yeah. Then you've stumped me, and what I'm going to do is ask you to email me. Okay, I'll take it. And I'll help you set up... Uh, a case with support, or um, we can just give you the, I can just diagnose it for you over the phone if I can. Not phone, over email if I can. The other thing you can do if you want is go pull down 4.1 and pull up that uh, statements panel, and you can actually see the query that we're running. I'm just scheduling, scrolling back here to get to my email address. I always like it when people immediately go try the stuff that I'm showing. It kind of means that maybe you like what you've seen. I don't know. If you can get it to work, you would like it. But uh, here's my contact info. Just don't forget the D, because there's lots and lots of Jeff Smiths here at Oracle. All right. Okay. Can I write it down? While I've got you talking, have you um, have you ever taken a look at this DBA panel before? Is this the first time um, you're seeing it? Um, I've have poked at it, but not nothing serious. Yeah, there is a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff in there. I probably showed about a quarter of right. it. And I was hoping in the SQL monitor, I would get yes. a little more stuff. But I only see like five rows in there. It's, uh, this is an active system. Am I doing something wrong there? Uh, I don't know, but I can I can show you what how we're populating that screen. Okay. Since you were polite enough to answer my questions and play along, so if I refresh. This and come in and look. Actually, let's not sequester. Oh, wait a minute. Um, this. Oh, you know what? It may be a privilege, privileges thing. Okay. Uh, my user is not a DBA user, although the DBA granted me. Uh, select on all the V dollar views. Okay. So that that may be it. Yep. But this is an example of using that um, that statements page to see you know how we're putting that grid up there. Oh, up okay. Top. This how is how one did you get more. there again? Um, so this is in version 4.1, which is that early adopter beta oh, okay. thing. Um, okay. So I don't know if you want to go do that on a production system, but if you wanted to use it kind of troubleshoot. Um, 
what you're seeing there with your current user. Okay. Uh, you can see the query that we're running. Basically, the bulk of it's coming from these GV dollar SQL underscore monitor um, views. Okay. Yeah, I'll check that and maybe just revision. Uh, I can say show SQL details, and I don't know if there's going to be anything here. Yeah, so here, this one's already run, but I can see the details of it running, and this one's kind of boring. But what most people like is uh, hitting the Save button, and it generates the HTML page that has the, um, you know, the six different ways to look at plans and zooming in and out and uh, that sort of stuff, although you can hover over these guys and get more detail if there's more detail there. I'm not seeing it on these. So yeah, I do have I can select from SQL monitor. So. Okay. So. so might be something uh, we might be filtering to cuz there's not auto, we don't it doesn't autom this is just showing stuff that's running or that actually had um, the reports um, activated for duration. So these are all done. It's more interesting when they're actually still running. And these are just really boring system admin jobs. I have a video and a, and a blog post on how to um, step through the real-time SQL monitoring stuff. And when you email me, I can reply back with those links if you're interested. Cool. Yeah. Anyone, anyone else have anything they'd like to talk about? Um, before everyone hangs up, I would just say thanks for taking the time to dial in today for our second week. And um, I will post the details for what next week's topic will be as soon as I have them. And uh, the link for the recording will be posted up later today, so you can check back here to see that. And if you missed last week, it was a really cool session, or at least I thought it was cool, not just because it was me, but the, the topic's cool. Um, we have a new um, SQL Plus type tool coming from the SQL developer team uh, for the command line interface that supports all of the SQL plus commands but allows you to do things like uh, statement completion or statement history recall and object name completion and arrowing around in your buffer to, you know, edit your text and new new commands like uh, create table to select and DDL and a new version of describe. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, um, come back here and Go watch that video. So, thanks. Very welcome. And um, sounds like that's it for questions. Um, you guys have my contact info, so feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to end the recording. Uh, stop recording. <laughs>